Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Whatever Happened To, the series where we take a where are they now look at players who found success in the National Hockey League but are no longer permanent fixtures in the league either due to controversy, poor play or just rotten luck. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at a 12-year veteran of the league and a Stanley Cup champion, as we ask, whatever happened to Ilya Brizgalov? After being selected 44th overall in the second round of the 2000 NHL entry draft by the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, Russian goaltender Ilya Brizgalov continued to suit up for his pre-draft team, Lada Togliatti of the Russian Super League, as well as their farm team up until the 01-02 season. Brizgalov then left his homeland and brought his services over to North America, where he spent the majority of the next four seasons with the Mighty Ducks AHL affiliate, the Cincinnati Mighty Ducks, posting a 76, 80 and 24 record in 199 AHL games. However, Brizgalov did get the opportunity to suit up under the bright lights of the bigs in his NHL debut, as he played in two games for Anaheim during this four-year stretch. The 05-06 NHL season would see Brizgalov finally join Anaheim's roster full-time as the team's backup goaltender, thanks to former backup Martin Gerber departing from the franchise the Russian goaltender would end up playing more games than expected in his rookie season, due to injuries to Duck starting netminder Jean-Sebastien Jaguer. Brizgalov finished his rookie season in the NHL with a 13-12-1 record, a 2.51 goals against average, and a .910 save percentage in 31 games. This performance helped the Mighty Ducks clinch a berth in the 2006 playoffs, where Brizgalov was called upon to tend the crease in 11 games, to the tune of a 6-4 record, a 1.46 goals against average, and a .944 save percentage, but the Ducks were eliminated in the conference finals by the Edmonton Oilers. Fun fact, Brizgalov's performance in the playoffs also helped him tie a 60-year-old playoff record set by Frank McCool way back in 1945, for the most consecutive shutouts by a rookie during the playoffs with three, whilst also surpassing Jaguer's record for the third longest playoff shutout streak of all time. So yeah, Ilya Brizgalov played pretty well during the 06 playoffs. With his one-year, $456,000 contract with Anaheim complete, and following his impressive performance in the playoffs, the Ducks were eager to keep their rising star in the crease on the roster. So, on September 6th, 2006, Brizgalov signed a two-year contract with the team worth an average annual value of $1.181 million a season. The 06-07 NHL season saw Brizgalov return to his backup goaltending position on the newly renamed Anaheim Ducks and put up similar numbers to his season prior posting a 10-8-6 record, a 2.47 goals against average, and a .907 save percentage in 27 games. These numbers helped the Ducks return to the postseason, where Brizgalov was called upon to tend the goal for five games, due to Jaguer taking a personal leave of absence during the playoffs. Brizgalov posted a 3-1 record, a 2.25 goals against average, and a .922 save percentage, en route to helping the Ducks clinch the 2007 Stanley Cup. After seven years of hard work, seven years of fine-tuning his game and toiling away in the minors or overseas, this former second-round draft pick was now a Stanley Cup champion. Though he had reached the pinnacle of the hockey world just three years into his NHL career, Brizgalov's time in the best hockey league in the world was only just getting started. The 07-08 NHL season saw Brizgalov begin the year once more as the backup goaltender of the Ducks. However, with the team's recent acquisition of Swiss goaltender Jonas Hiller, 
Brizgalov was placed on the trading block, as Ducks general manager Brian Burke looked to find space on the roster for his new goalie. Though a potential deal was claimed to have almost been completed at the 2007 NHL entry draft, Burke was unable to ship Brizgalov to another NHL team. So, on November 16th, 2007, Burke placed Brizgalov on waivers. The Russian goaltender's time in limbo didn't last long though, as the following day, his contract was picked up and he was claimed off waivers by the Phoenix Coyotes. Having spent parts of seven seasons in the Ducks organization, Brizgalov was taking his talents elsewhere in the league for the first time. And boy, would this be the right career move for him. Brizgalov spent the rest of the season with the Coyotes and made a pretty strong first impression as he established himself as the team's starting goaltender. Thanks to his 26-22-5 record, his 2.43 goals against average and .921 save percentage in 55 games. This play also earned Brizgalov a three-year, $12.75 million contract extension with an average annual value of $4.25 million in January 2008, just a few months after joining the team. Despite this impressive start with his new team, the Coyotes were unable to make an appearance in the playoffs, as their fourth place finish in the Pacific Division meant they missed the postseason for the fifth straight year. Though he was unable to help his team return to the playoffs in his first year in Arizona, Brizgalov would get the job done and make a pretty good name for himself with his new franchise in the seasons that followed. The 08-09 NHL season saw the freshly contracted Brizgalov play his first full season as a Coyote, as the former second round pick posted a less impressive 26-31-6 record a 2.98 goals against average, and a .906 save percentage in 65 games. This slight drop in his production, compared to the season prior, didn't do much to help Phoenix's playoff hopes, as the Coyotes missed the playoffs yet again. Though he took a noticeable step back, compared to his first season in Arizona, and wasn't producing the numbers that the team needed, the former Stanley Cup champion was about to bounce back in a big way. The 09-10 NHL season saw Brizgalov explode out of the gate and hit the ground running, as he cemented himself as not just the best goalie on the Coyotes roster, but one of the top goaltenders in the entire National Hockey League, since he finished the season with a 42-20-6 record, a 2.29 goals against average, and a .920 save percentage in 69 games. In doing so, Brizgalov established his career high for wins in a season, with his first and only year with 40-plus wins, and earned a spot on the NHL's second All-Star team. This career year also helped Phoenix finally clinch a playoff berth for the first time since 2002, but Brizgalov couldn't carry his incredible regular season numbers into the playoffs, as he posted a 3-4 record, a 3.44 goals against average, and a .906 save percentage, as the Coyotes were eliminated in seven games in the first round by the Detroit Red Wings. The 10-11 NHL season saw Brizgalov put up solid numbers for the Coyotes once again, as the Russian goaltender posted a 36-20-10 record, a 2.48 goals against average, and a .909 save percentage in 68 games. Though many were unsure as to how Phoenix would perform that season, due to questionable or inconsistent talent in their lineup, Brizgalov's production helped the Coyotes return to the playoffs for the second straight season. However, Things didn't go so well for either Brizgalov or the Coyotes from there, as the former Stanley Cup champion posted an 0-4 record, a 4.36 goals against average, and a .879 save percentage, as Phoenix were swept in the first round by the Detroit Red Wings. After his fourth season in Phoenix had ended, and his three-year contract with the Coyotes had expired, 
both parties were unable to come to terms on a new contract to keep the former second round pick on the roster. So, on June 6, 2011, the Coyotes traded Brizgalov's negotiation rights to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for a 2012 third round pick, forward Matt Claxon, and future considerations. The Flyers then proceeded to sign Brizgalov to a huge nine year, $51 million contract. In order to lock up their new starting goaltender to such a deal, the Flyers had to make several big trades just an hour before the signing, such as sending forward Jeff Carter to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Jakub Voracek and draft picks, as well as sending captain Mike Richards to the Los Angeles Kings for Wayne Simmons, Braden Shen and a pick. Just like that, Brizgalov's consistent play over the past few seasons had earned him the contract of his career. But his craziest NHL moments, both on and off the ice, were yet to come. The 11-12 NHL season saw Brizgalov take to the ice for the Flyers for the first time and have a strong season with the Pennsylvania franchise, as he posted a 33-16-7 record, a 2.48 goals against average, and a .909 save percentage in 59 games. His debut season with the Flyers also saw the introduction of Brizgalov as the league's biggest meme, as his comments regarding the universe during his appearance on HBO's 24-7 series, his comments following a 9-8 loss to the Winnipeg Jets early in the season, and his good news for reporters before the 2012 NHL Winter Classic revealed Brizgalov's great sense of humour, his sometimes brutal honesty, and his wonderful personality to fans around the league. Seriously, go and watch a compilation of Brizgalov's funniest moments if you haven't already. They are absolutely brilliant. But anyway, Brizgalov's third straight 30-win season helped Philadelphia book a trip to the playoffs, where the Russian goaltender posted a less impressive 5-6 record, a 3.46 goals against average, and a .887 save percentage in 11 games, as the Flyers were eliminated in the second round by the New Jersey Devils. Though his numbers had taken a pretty big hit in the postseason, Brizgalov had the next eight years of his contract to lock down the Flyers' crease and help Philly become a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. But first, there was a lockout! During the 12-13 lockout, Brizgalov decided to return home to his native Russia and suit up for CSKA Moscow of the KHL. The former Russian Super League goaltender posted a 6-5 record, a 2.13 goals against average, and a .913 save percentage in 12 games with the Army men, before the NHL resumed play and Brizgalov returned to the Flyers lineup. Brizgalov's brief trip back home didn't do much to help his production back in Philly, as he took a huge step backwards compared to seasons prior, posting a 19-17-3 record, a 2.79 goals against average, and a .9 save percentage in 40 games. These numbers really didn't help Philly's playoff hopes either, as the Flyers ended up missing out on the postseason for the first time in six years. Though he clearly didn't have the season that he or anybody else in the Flyers organization would have wanted, things were about to go from bad to worse for the Russian goaltender, as on June 25th, 2013, the Flyers used a compliance buyout that they had gained from the NHL's new collective bargaining agreement to buy out the remaining seven years of Brizgalov's contract with the team. Just two years into the biggest contract of his career, Brizgalov had just lost both his job as the Flyers' starting netminder and his place on a National Hockey League roster. Despite this huge setback, Brizgalov's career in the best league in the world wasn't done just yet. Having become an unrestricted free agent for the first time in his career, the 2007 Stanley Cup champion wasted no time starting his climb back into the bigs. Instead of taking a contract in the AHL or heading overseas, 
It was announced on October 2nd, 2013, that Brizgalov had signed a tryout contract with the Las Vegas Wranglers of the East Coast Hockey League to serve as an emergency backup goaltender. However, he would be released two weeks later without ever playing a game for the team. Bet you didn't know that, did ya? To this day, Brizgalov is still most likely the highest paid ECHL player in league history, thanks to those buyout checks he received from Philly. They don't call it the city of brotherly love for nothing, folks. Then, on November 8th, 2013, almost five months after his buyout from the Flyers, the former second round pick made a return to the NHL, as he signed a one-year, $2 million contract with the Edmonton Oilers to serve as the team's backup goaltender. Just like that, Brizgalov had found a way back into the league and was heading north of the border to suit up for his first and only Canadian franchise of his career. After a brief conditioning stint with the Oklahoma City Barons of the AHL, Brizgalov suited up in 20 games for the Oilers, where he posted a 5-8-5 record, a 3.01 goals against average, and a .908 save percentage, while splitting the crease with starting netminder Devin Dubnik. Before Brizgalov was then traded to the Minnesota Wild, on March 4th, 2014, in exchange for a 2014 fourth round draft pick. With this move, the Russian goaltender was joining his third NHL team in less than a year. But don't worry, the veteran netminder still had a bit of gas left in the tank. Brizgalov spent the rest of the 13-14 season with the Wild and played pretty well with the team, as he posted a 7-1-3 record, a 2.12 goals against average, and a .911 save percentage in 12 games. This production helped the Wild clinch a playoff berth, where the former Stanley Cup champion started the majority of Minnesota's playoff games, but posted a 3-6 record, a 2.63 goals against average, and a .885 save percentage, as the Wild were eliminated in the second round by the Chicago Blackhawks. Once the season ended and his one-year contract had expired, Brizgalov became an unrestricted free agent once again. The Russian goaltender would remain as a UFA for roughly half a year, until December 3rd, 2014, when he signed a PTO contract with the Anaheim Ducks, the team that drafted him 14 years ago and the team he spent his first seven years in the league with. Just like that, Brizgalov was heading back to where it all began as his career in the best league in the world was beginning to come to a close. After a successful tryout with the Ducks, Brizgalov was signed to a one-year, $2.88 million contract with the team. Unfortunately though, the former second round pick's return to the team couldn't really have gone any worse, as he posted a 1-4-1 record, a 4.19 goals against average, and a .847 save percentage in 8 games, before being placed on waivers and sent down to the Norfolk Admirals of the AHL on February 23rd, 2015. However, just two days later, the Ducks placed Brizgalov on unconditional waivers, and announced in a public statement shortly after, that Brizgalov would be returning home to be with his family and would not finish the 14-15 season with the team. In fact, this move would turn out to be the last of Ilya Brizgalov's professional playing career, as he has not suited up for an NHL team or any other professional hockey team around the world since. Though he has seemingly never officially announced his retirement, at 39 years old, chances are that the former Stanley Cup champion's days playing professional hockey are all but over, especially considering he hasn't played professionally in almost half a decade. Following the conclusion of his career, Brizgalov seems to have found a good balance between focusing on life away from the sport and keeping himself involved with hockey and the NHL. The former goaltender has occasionally appeared on Sportsnet as a guest analyst, has written several articles and starred in several videos for the Players' Tribune, and even attended the 2017 NHL All-Star Game as a journalist for the Tribune to provide his unconventional questions and humour, 
much to the delight of players and fans around the league. Also, if you're a video game fan, you'll be pleased to hear that his famous Why You Have To Be Mad quote has been made into a voice line for the character Zaya in Blizzard's popular MOBA Overwatch. It is said that Brizgalov now resides somewhere in the Philadelphia area, which is of course where he signed the biggest contract of his career. Speaking of that big contract, thanks to the Flyers buying him out, Brizgalov is still being paid by the team and will continue to earn just over $1 million a season from the Flyers every single year until 2027. So I think it's safe to say he's done alright for himself. But regardless of how much he is still getting paid or how he left the league, there is no doubt that Ilya Brizgalov had a pretty good run in the best league in the world. In 465 NHL regular season games, the former 2000 second round pick posted a 221, 162 and 54 record, a 2.58 career goals against average and a .912 career save percentage as well as a 20 and 25 record, a 2.78 career goals against average, and a .905 career save percentage in 47 NHL playoff games. Add to that a place on the 2010 second All-Star team and a Stanley Cup championship in 2007, and you've had yourself a pretty impressive career. And there you go. That's what happened to Ilya Brizgalov. What do you guys think about Brizgalov's career? Was it good? Bad? Or do you think he should have a job as an NHL analyst? I know I do. Also, is there another player that you would like me to look at as part of this series? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Andy. Cameron J, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Dave, Martin Tolness, Matt DeWild, Max Artis, Nat Marlow, Paul Malia, The Crazy Yankee, and The Legacy, as well as a huge thank you to Cam Montgomery for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.